Hello everybody, Alexandria Anthony, World Paranormal Research Society. Before we get into today's episode, I want to give you a little bit of a quote to ponder food for thought. Knowing others is wisdom. Knowing yourself is enlightenment. And today is another episode in a series we're bringing to you to ponder, to seek answers, do research, and it'll show you the similarities through many cultures from the beginning of time into the present on how many myths and legends all have the very same beginnings, different cultures, change it up by giving different names for these entities and phenomena. We seek to enlighten you to seek answers. The answers are out there. We need to do our homework to better enlighten ourselves so we can help people. Huge shout out again to Kristen from Bodai Paranormal. She truly is a soul sister. I've traveled around the world, met many people, and she truly is it is in the paranormal field for the right reasons. She wants to genuinely help people. She's on a quest for knowledge. She asks questions, and I find that completely amazing that you can meet someone that is not wanting to hoard knowledge. She wants to genuinely help people and I invite you all to check out Bodai Paranormal. Will be well worth it folks. Today we will be talking about the aspect, the theme of doppelganger or evil twin and really to bring it down to layman's terms, doppelganger, evil twin, is an apparition or a double of a living person. And sometimes they're portrayed as a ghostly or paranormal phenomena and usually seen as an omen of bad luck. And according to an age-old German folklore, all living creatures have a spirit double. I kind of like that terminology better, spirit double. And it is said they're invisible but identical to the living individual folks. And some other words that we use in everyday conversations that you may not realize and synonyms for doppelganger include alter ego, carbon copy, clone, counterpart, double, duplicate, facsimile, lookalike, mirror image, replica, twin, splitting image. And sometimes described as spiritual opposite or negative of human counterparts. So I'm throwing a lot of terms out there for you. And in, in, in 1796, German writer Johann Paul Richter, who wrote under the synonym Jean Paul, really coined the word doppelganger from doppel, which means double, and ganger meaning goer. And the word doppelganger was first used in the print form in 1851 and the concept of the existence of a spirit double that every man woman bird or beast is said to have is really an ancient theme and is a widespread belief hence bringing in I'm a historian. I always like to bring ancient civilizations and cultures into our topics. It is said that if you meet one's double, it is a sign that one's death is imminent. And 
just visualize this in your mind, folks. Doppelganger, double death. We've got three Ds, triple Ds there, folks. And we read many stories and we see many accompanying photos where two people look strikingly similar. And it could be really, and scientists have posed this question, it really could be a case of our genes running out of options. Kind of ponder that thought. Sort of visualize in your mind a Rubik's Cube. It's almost like a Rubik's Cube. You can get a lot of variations of the formulae for Rubik's Cubes. Even though through our features, they vary more. Our features as a human being vary more than other animals, but our genes do not, folks. And really, the mythology of spirit doubles can be traced back thousands of years and was present in many cultures of the past, holding a prominent place in ancient legends stories, and artworks. It has been through some accounts that the term evil twin might be attempting to provide advice that can be misleading or malicious. And you kind of get that visualization in your mind, folks, of the evil twin on one shoulder, the angel on another shoulder, and you hear the whispers do it, do it, do it. And they also are known to plant sinister ideas in the victim's mind or cause chaos and great confusion. For this very reason, folks, it has been suggested to people that they should avoid at all cost communicating with their own doppelganger for their own safety and well-being. Again, we have the visualization of the little evil angel on your shoulder trying to steer you wrong, trying to give you bad advice, and trying to get you to do very bad things. One of the most famous depictions of doppelgangers comes from the 1851 sketch and the 1864 watercolor called how they met themselves you're going to see a screenshot of this um watercolor and it's quite beautiful and it says a story without words and this is by dante gabriel rostatini and you'll see that again and it really gives a visualization it depicts two medieval lovers are walking through the woods at twilight when they encounter their doubles who really glow supernaturally and the man draws his sword in astonishment while his lover appears to collapse in a deadly swoon and many skeptics and we are all familiar in the paranormal world skeptics say that doppelganger cases are in themselves works of fiction and i really tell you folks i really beg to differ but i know there are skeptics out there that find fault in everything and i really think another way to look at skeptics if we didn't have skeptics we wouldn't want to work that much harder to prove those skeptics wrong and there are really a number of real life cases in which many individuals through history have met their sinister doubles and one that comes to mind is abraham lincoln and this was chronicled by Noah Brooks in his book, Washington in Lincoln's Time, 1895. And Abraham Lincoln was supposedly a very open-minded statesman. 
And he really, a lot of you may not know this fact, he recognized the existence of the paranormal world. And he reported seeing his doppelganger in the mirror on more than one occasion. And specifically in 1860, shortly after Lincoln was elected, he claimed to see a double reflection of himself in the mirror. He really asserted that the second reflection looked remarkably very pale and weaker. His wife believed it was a bad omen. Here we have that bad omen coming into play, suggesting he would finish his first term but not make it to the end of his second term. And we all know how that went down. You'll see a picture of Abraham Lincoln as well. And the subject of the double, again, has a long history, particularly in literature. And in Greek mythology, Narcissus falls in love with his reflection. And in Gothic tales, such as Edgar Allan Poe, William Wilson, 1839, also a lesser known fairy tale, Hans Christian Andersen, The Shadow. So you may want to go and read um, Edgar Allan Poe's William Wilson or Hans Christian Andersen's The Shadow, folks. The ancient Egyptian mythology, a Ka, was a tangible spirit double, having the same memories and feelings as the person to whom the counterpart belongs. And in one particular Egyptian myth, entitled the Greek princess. This is another prime example of different cultures in history taking the same story and changing it up. And you may remember this story about the Greek princess. And this Egyptian view of this, of the Trojan War, is that a Ka of Helen was used to mislead Paris of Troy helping to stop the war. And also in Norse folklore, they also describe entities known as Vardarger, which is a ghostly being that preceded their living counterparts folks. So that is very instrumental and it shows another example of a spirit being double doppelganger. And in the Orkney, Orkney Islands in Scotland there is also a feared small fairy-like creature called Troll. It's T-R-O-W-S, Trolls. And trolls would give birth to children who were more than likely very sickly. And pregnant women in Scotland were careful. They were carefully guarded from the trolls who would often steal healthy human babies and replace them with their own children. And this is where the terminology chain links chain links come in and they were called chain links who would transform into exact and here's that word on the list we showed you replicas of the stolen children you're going to see an image of a trolls from the orkney islands in scotland as well many native american creation myths and we we've spoke about the creation myths in a previous episode provide the role of dualistic twins hope legends refer to twins and they are the child of the sun or the child of the water so you see how various cultures have a same concept but they change it, they adapt it up to their particular civilization. So where did the belief 
of spirit doubles really come from? Many today still believe in the existence of a double self. Some scientists believe that this phenomena occurs based on injuries, stimulation to several parts of the brain and we know that scientists are key they always have to find a scientific reason for a phenomena and uh, they say that this the injuries or the stimulation to certain parts of the brain cause errors in in spatical reasoning folks and some believe that we also live in a parallel universe i do hold that belief that we do live in a parallel universe in which everything in our world is replicated in another dimension and whatever you choose to believe the belief in spirit double has been instilled has really instilled both fear and wonder in people for thousands and thousands of years so what we're saying or what history tells us is that spirit doubles have been around for thousands and thousands of years doppelganger is not a new concept it is an ancient concept that the name and the different superstitions have evolved just like human beings have evolved through time and this again is another example of how many ancient civilization cultures have the same legends creation myths what have you the same legends but they change it mold it to their particular culture belief and whether you choose to believe a doppelganger spirit double is a spirit or an omen of bad luck or even death god or a monster do your research folks research 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 ask questions there is no such thing as a stupid question we are on a quest to seek answers we have a thirst for knowledge folks the paranormal field in our opinion my opinion and this is something i live by should not be about fame fortune or getting on tv i find i'm not knocking uh the paranormal teams on tv not at all folks that's their gig that's just not my gig and uh, i don't believe really i believe in the research paranormal research the paranormal field isn't all glamour uh, photo ops uh, wearing this clothes this equipment you can do paranormal research with the most simple basic tools that don't cost a fortune and i firmly believe in that i believe in the research the seeking of answers the quest of knowledge but most of all i believe and we believe in genuinely helping people folks knowledge is to be shared not hoarded by a select few there are no experts i'm not an expert and you cannot call yourself an expert unless unless you've actually lived in the day i'm i'm a historian but i'm not an expert in history because i didn't live in those times i didn't see it first hand we get all these from historical accounts we see it by things on temples these are people's perspective their take on a particular inc incident in history and we all know that history gets muddled we know that 
you if you do an experiment go around in a circle you take a fact or event you have one person share it and you keep sharing it and sharing it everybody adds their own personal perspective on this incident that's why the the saying is that a legend always or mostly begins with a tidbit of fact but it gets muddled through the telling of time the oral history everybody adds their own personality their own flair to an event so we begin with a tidbit of fact and when you go through the ages it becomes different than the original event there are so many others and i'm not knocking anybody out there folks don't get me wrong this is my personal take there are so many others who seek fame fortune at the risk of people's grief and suffering i read runes and uh, people always the first question they ask me is that can you see the future can you tell me what's going to happen next week nobody can tell you what's going to happen in the future god has that ability we don't have the ability we can give suggestions we can we all have free will our future is not written in stone it can be changed it can be altered so folks nobody can tell your future we can suggest we may see uh, tidbits of what could happen what we're trying to do and what people do is reinforce a notion that people may have in their minds so no one can tell the future and I certainly do not agree with uh if i you know people ask me how much i charge for my rune readings what i do is that if i do charge the monies that are given are either to an animal shelter or a homeless shelter i truly believe that if you are working in the realm of spirit you cannot accept monetary gain or reward and you've got to give back so when I do a rune reading if somebody wants to give me a monetary amount the full monetary amount is given to again an animal rescue shelter or a homeless shelter once we have a gift we must give back that's that's what a gift is for and I truly believe that and we all are on this journey seeking the same answers and if you're in the paranormal field to make money it may be your evil twin your doppelganger your spiritual double whispering that word of greed in your ear so really folks get out of the paranormal rat race set yourself apart be an original don't be a du duplicate a replica that's the copy so that's all the words are the different synonyms for doppelganger be an original the true way of the spiritual world is to freely help other folks so before we end the show i'm going to show and you'll see a screenshot as well there's eight things that they say or suggest about doppelgangers number one is seeing your doppelganger is an omen of death number two they say doppelgangers give malicious malicious evil bad advice number three if someone else sees your doppelganger it means you might be very very sick number four your doppelganger is a ghostly double that lived before you number five it is your spiritual double number six it is your 
evil double from the underworld. Number seven, even a portrait doppelganger can be a bad omen. Number eight, and finally, a doppelganger spiritual double is said to be a sign of an alternate universe. So you're going to see screenshots throughout this video of various doppelgangers and uh, information about it as well. Really fascinating information and another myth or rumor uh, as a historian that I find quite interesting is um, among the many myths and rumors that surround Catherine the Great, a great historical strong woman, and one tale recalls her servants uh, discovering her double sitting on her throne while she slept, and the empress ordered the imposter to be shot, and she died of a stroke several weeks later, folks. So it is really a fascinating, fascinating concept. I'm also going to show you examples in literature of uh, describing doppelgangers, doubles. You're going to have some examples in film as well where they've used the concept of uh, evil twin doppelganger. There's also examples in TV, different TV series that use the term doppelganger. So folks, I really hope you enjoyed this in our ongoing series on how the similarities through ancient cultures go right into modern times. And I hope it has also inspired you to research more, pick up a book, learn about history. There are no experts on any topic unless you've actually lived in that time, you've lived in that experience. So in your everyday life, I'm going to leave you with this as well. These synonyms again for doppelganger that you probably are using every single day and have not given it a second thought. Again, alter ego, carbon copy, clone, counterpart, duplicate, double, facsimile, lookalike, mirror image, replica, twin, splitting image. I almost like I'm describing a piece of office equipment, a photocopy machine. So until next time, folks, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and please, if you can help anybody that seeks help, don't turn them away. If you don't know the answers, be honest with them, be honest with yourself. Take care and until next time, folks.